good afternoon friends in the last class we have seen that how to get feel for few numbers so that it can help you to design a conceptual sketch of an airplane and the understanding was i have a mission requirement and from mission requirement could be something like this we calculated what is the w not that is take off then we try to find out wing loading w not by s once we selected w not by s we now know what is the wing area we have also got idea about what is the t by w or thrust loading required for the conceptual airplane and after that we try to understand how much tail volume ratio is required how much in notation we might have written cht and cvt this tail volume ratio for horizontal tail and tail volume ratio for vertical tail then we also talked about roughly how much will be the elevator size then some topic some discussion on aileron flaps this will help you in just drawing a sketch because after that we will do the analysis right in a design i will do the analysis but don't forget one thing we are all designing this airplane when it is cm versus cl we are designing for a particular cl design the cl design we are getting as an example which will meet perhaps the cruise condition if it is a transport airplane and also we have decided we will design this airplane for a particular static margin maybe 15% 10% 5% depending upon how we mature in terms of technology and calculation once i do that then we were looking for how do i set the wing and tail so that these two conditions are met that is one is cm not greater than 0 which is particular number if this is 0.2 and this slope is 0.15 that is 15% static margin then this value becomes 0.03 and the question we addressed was how do i look at wing and tail what is tail setting angle how do i find it so that cm not is satisfied and dcm by dcl is satisfied remember for static margin let's say this is neutral point minus xcg of the airplane and we have expression for how to find neutral point which is largely uh, which largely depends on tail volume ratio all these things we have done right and the next question is suppose this is the cl at which we have designed but it's not all the time we will be flying at this cl so i need to fly at some time at this cl sometime perhaps at this cl right at a higher speed at a lower speed how do i do that because when you are designing the basic configuration which is here this that time i will ensure that the elevator requirement is zero so that trim drag is zero but when i want to go from here to here you could see that immediately it will generate negative pitching moment so i have to counter that so i have to give elevator up so how much elevator i need to give up so that my next cl is what i desire here or how much elevator deflection when i want to fly at this cl and that is typically the control problem and when i talk about control problem 
what I must look for is what is the control power of, my, of the elevator. You see, this is the elevator. Let's say this is complete, this is the horizontal tail, and this part is the elevator. Then, how much delta cm, that is how much cm it will produce, if I draw it like this, this is the tail and this is the elevator. How much, and this is a delta E positive, you know all these things. The elevator control board is defined as delta cm by delta delta E, that is, which is cm delta E, which essentially tells you how much cm it will generate per unit elevator deflection. It goes without saying, if elevator is deflected down, it will give nose down moment. If elevator is up, it will give a nose up moment. Now, if I connect this from here to here, my question would be, if I am flying at CL point 2, where elevator deflection is 0, if I now want to fly at CL point 3, how much elevator up is required? That I should know as a designer and I should spread the elevator deflection within the maximum and minimum value or plus and minus value of the elevator deflection. For example, delta E max, if it is plus minus 25 degree, then I should spread all the operations within at least plus minus 15 degree, because you know that around 7, 8 degrees I need to keep extra for ground effect while landing. right? So, how do I get an assessment of how much elevator I should deflect to trim an aircraft a particular CL? Just a revision for all of us. We have done it in stability and control. We know that CM, we write it as CM naught plus CM alpha into alpha plus CM delta E into delta E. So when I am trimming the airplane at a particular CL, that means that time CM is 0. So I write 0 equal to CM naught plus CM alpha into alpha trim plus CM delta E into delta E required, right? Alpha trim means this is CL trim, that alpha corresponding to the CL is alpha trim and also I write C L trim is equal to C L naught plus C L alpha into alpha plus C L delta E into delta E required and this alpha is alpha trim and you, ref and you edit and you recall if I use these two equation and for an approximate case where I neglect C L naught I can write delta E equal to delta E naught plus D delta E by D C L trim into C L trim, where D delta E by D C L trim is nothing but minus static margin by C M delta E. This is a linear graph and assumptions which are well known, you must refer my class on aircraft stability and control, but this linear variation is quite good in terms of getting hang of initial numbers. See here, what is delta E naught? Delta E naught is minus C m naught by C m delta E and static margin, you know what you have designed for, neutral point minus CG of the aircraft and CM delta E, you can always find out if you know what percentage of the horizontal tail is elevator. A typical value for this for a normal airplane will be order of minus 1.0 per radian. 
I am giving this number because we are at a conceptual stage and you know very well how to find out CM delta E1, the geometry is given. CM0 you know from CL trim and CM0 this is also known to you, the design stage you put that number, put CM delta E, static margin you know, you know CM delta E. So, you will get for a given CL trim, what will be the delta E required? What you as a designer has to ensure that if your delta E max, which is true for a conventional airplane, is equal to plus minus 25 degree. So, as a designer, you use only plus minus 15 degrees, 15 to 17 degrees, not more than that. Keep that 8, 9 degrees for handling the ground effect because you know as I come close to the ground, the downward value almost becomes half. So, naturally there is another pitch down moment comes. So, you have to put the elevator up. So, you need to keep that much of elevator up free for you. Otherwise, the elevator itself may stall. So, once I know this, I can easily find out if I want to trim the airplane for a particular CL, CL trim, what is the elevator required and whether it is within this plus minus 25 degree or not. So, this is also a very, very important while you are designing the airplane at the initial stage. right? And you can very well see that this delta E requirement will change with respect to the static margin. That means, as I am making it less and less stable, say from 15 percent, if I make it to 10 percent, the delta E requirement will go down. Naturally, less stable means less effort. If I am increasing the static margin, that is, I am taking the CG forward and forward, the delta E required will become pretty high. We have to see this, whether I have got that much of bandwidth in elevator or not, we have with the CG travel, because you know that aircraft has different level of static margin when it is taking off, when it is having a windmill condition, when it is cruising, depending upon where the engine locations are there. So, all these are part of analysis, but at the conceptual stage, if you take 50 percent or 40 percent of the horizontal tail as your elevator, as we discussed earlier, you will find fairly you will get a good beginning. Right? Once you make this layout, then we need to address one by one. Now, I was debating after this we should go for aerodynamics or not. That is, once I know all this geometric parameter, should I go for refinement of the weight and the weight and the aerodynamic drag coefficient estimation or I should go for landing gear. I have taken a decision will from here we will go to different types of landing gear and once at a system level we complete, then we will come to analysis. So, after this keep a halt, I will be talking about landing gear configurations, I will be talking about how to mount the engine, I will talk, talk about fuel tanks, where do I locate fuel tanks, all these system level things and once these system level things are over. I will come back to the analysis. In the meantime, I have seen lot of demand on designing unmanned aerial vehicle, especially electric motor power. So, we have kept one session where examples were given, will be given, edit. We have kept one session where examples will be given, which will help you in designing unmanned aerial vehicle, which are electric driven, power driven, the battery power driven and also through that example you will also understand how to set the wing, setting angle, tail setting angle etcetera, but however the data will be for unmanned aerial vehicle. This way you will get a broader perspective and you will really appreciate this course more because a small unmanned vehicle you can make yourself and check for yourself. Thank you very much.